Okay, so welcome back everyone to Young Adult Society with um, Pastor Bisama today. What's up? And for those of you who didn't see our first podcast, my name is Ashley. I am here to um, actually interview you. I said this was um, a podcast and today's episode was going to be about ministry, but I actually wanted to pick your brain a little bit. Okay. Or a lot. <laughs> okay, so... Um, my first question would be, what do you think ministry is? What do I think ministry is? Yes. If I have to define it um, very briefly, I would say ministry is at its core um, lifting other people up. Mm. That's what I would say ministry is. So whatever, um, mm. it could be, obviously it could take many forms, but at the end of the day, if you're lifting other people up, I would define that as ministry. Ministry. Okay, and what kind of examples would you give that are ministry that people don't think are, but actually that, that is ministry? So many. Um, it could be mm, chatting with uh, your friends online. That could be ministry mm -hmm. because um, you if you're doing it intentionally to lift people up, then it's ministry. So uh, chatting with them online, checking up on them, saying, hey, what's up, how you doing? You know, I heard that this or that, I heard that. Um, uh, you know, you, you, I don't know, like you lost an uncle or something like that, you know, like, and you were, and you're just reaching out and you're doing it intentionally, you're lifting them up, you're, you're helping them feel connected to somebody especially uh, through the pandemic that was so important. That is ministry because mm -hmm. you're lifting them up. And some people might not think that's ministry. Well, that's different than ministry. Um, it doesn't matter what platform you're using, you're connecting with somebody and you're lifting them up. So that's an example of something that people might not say, hey, uh, you know, that's not ministry, but it is, I think. What would you say is like your most impactful ministry for you that you've done that you feel like this is how I've reached so many people because God has allowed me to use this ministry. Mm. Wow. That's a really tough question. <laughs> the most impactful? Yes. I don't know. I don't. I, how do you measure that? How do you measure the impact of the ministry? How do you measure the impact? That's a very good question, too. Yeah. Like, how do you, <laughs> like, how, we, how do we compare? On one hand, you have one conversation that is one one on one with somebody. And um, later on, you realize that that one conversation, it's not like that one conversation you saved them. No, it's not like that, usually in real life. In the movies, maybe, you know, one conversation the whole life, Jay, uh, with nice music in the background. Mm. Uh, in the in the in real life it's a little it's a process but you had one conversation that helped them think about their struggles in a different way and put them in a different path and all of a sudden later on several years later you realize wow that had a lot of impact in that person's life but how do you compare that to uh, a Bible class like in my own life for example you ask me what is the most impactful in my life how do you compare that to a Bible class that you feel the power of the Holy Spirit present like it's thick and you're like wow like he's here and like the kids are actually thinking about God they're not goofing off or looking at their phone for once you know and they're like oh, man God is, God is actually here and the things that I'm saying are actually like getting in their hearts deep and you can sense it you know like you can make an impact and, and they tell you you know uh, the, the high school kid a teenager comes afterwards and says after the class Hey, Mr. Sama, that was that was a really good class. Thank you. Mm. You know, but how do you measure both? Which one is more impactful? Mm. You know, I don't. I think it's unfair to measure that. Or like, uh, like again, you're you're asking me in my life. You know, like I yeah. write a composition for choir and orchestra, and we get to perform it um, at the general conference, um, and. <laughs> We a mixture of adults and high school kids, and we go there, and we in, in the middle of the performance, a guy, a random guy, comes in, and he kneels down. He asks for a program, and he kneels down, and he starts praying in the back. And I have no like nobody knows this guy. He yeah. just shows up, and 
through the concert and he's kneeling there praying for like half an hour oh wow through the concert um you know on the concert like 2000 people were there and like I, it's just like how do you measure like which one is more impactful and it's my own composition and it's about jesus and him dying and resurrecting and all that and i'm conducting it and so there i am that is that is you can say well that ministry reached more people but to me it's very hard to measure how do you measure it's a very unfair to measure um that was the most impactful towards me like yeah. it was i was trying to do ministry for others but actually just being there conducting was ministry to me yeah okay all right so you've mentioned that you're also a teacher that you compose music um that's those are very like i don't want to say like yeah they're brilliant things you know they're amazing things so to someone who doesn't compose music that isn't a teacher that isn't a pastor um, how would you say, like, realistically speaking to them, how can they be a ministry? How can they help? How can they re reach other people? Mm. Like, what would you say to those people? Yeah, I would say, like I was saying other, before, you know, like, find ways to lift people up. However, whatever it is, you might say, well, I can't. I can't do this. I can't do that. Stop thinking about what you can't do. Mm. Think about what you can yes think about the things that you actually can't well, what what has god given you you know in the story of moses well, god says what's in your hand and he has a staff he was a shepherd yes he was just a shepherd he was a fugitive running for his life a shepherd 80 years old <laughs> 80 years old not really he would not be really considered part of yes i don't think <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh there he was and god was like it's your time now <laughs> and what's it what's in your hand you know i think that was a powerful question what's in your hand and he had a staff mm -hmm. and god said okay throw it down which to me is a symbol of like whatever is in your hand give it use it give it to god don't think about what you don't have in your hand think about what you have yeah. um whether it's like you have a phone like i was saying like you can always you can take pictures and pictures can be a lift, uplifting people. You can send a nice picture to somebody. You, you know your grandma needs to hear from you because you haven't taken the time to call her in a while. Ooh. That is ministry. You lift her up. You send, You take a selfie, one of those <laughs> hundreds of selfies you take a day, and then you send, send your grandma a selfie and say, Grandma, what's up? It's me. I just wanted to, wanted you to see a picture of me today. And you're like, well, she doesn't have a cell phone. Well, figure out a way to send it to her. Like, you you can do it. Send it in an email. Maybe she does email or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah, you have you have stuff at your command. It's just that we're not creative in thinking how we can put our hands, what our staff. You know what I mean? Staff, yeah. To work for lifting other people up. We're so accustomed to using our staff, whatever we have in our hands, to self lift to mm. you know what i mean like yeah. to entertain yeah. self to constantly consume for self self-love self-love in the in a in a in a wrong way you yeah. know but it's very self-centered yeah um self-love i guess you could say that Me but, before others yeah but there's so but with that stuff that we uh constantly use to consume and and be self-centered about we can use that to lift other people up yeah. And in, in doing that, you're going to lift yourself up mm. in a healthy way. Because the best way, honestly, in my life, I've experienced the, fair, the, the best way to, to be blessed, you could say, to, yeah. to receive something that is very, very meaningful and lasting is to give someone something meaningful and lasting. Mm -hmm. Like I was telling yeah. you, you think you're doing ministry, but the ministry is done to you yeah. when you use what you have. So... That's a long way to say, stop saying that you don't have any way to, to do ministry. You have some, you can lift somebody up today some way. It's a small way, but you can lift them up. You can never measure that. You can put a seed. You can put, even the post that we put, oh man, let, let me get started on that. <laughs> the stuff that we put on. So we spend so much time putting things on our stories yeah. and our posts and all this stuff and the TikToks and whatever it is, right? A little yeah. time, we used to do a lot of time. Well, why don't you make one of those a day be a meaningful 
uplifting one that you know someone struggling with something you don't have to say who it is or anything you put something that deals with that you have a verse you have a saying you have some video or song you know what i mean yeah make it intentional instead of all the tiktoks or all the stories be about i don't know you know like the shoe that i'm putting on today right? <laughs> you know what i mean what or, i'm eating for breakfast <laughs> what i'm eating for breakfast you know like <laughs> That stuff like that. So like, yeah. yes, we all have something we can. Besides the talents God has given to us, whatever it is you can do, if you like technology, if you like music in some way, you obviously you can use those talents. But there are very simple things that we all have. Like, I think we spend too much time saying, I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. and we don't spend enough time saying, this is what I have, this is what I'm gonna use. No, I agree, I totally agree. So. For young adults that have left the church and actually now want to come back, what kind of spiritual advice or advice in general, like what would you say for them to come back and um, know that they are accepted? Because at the end of the day, this is what this is for, to let you know that you are accepted, that we are receptive to you. And no matter what you've been through, what you've done, we're here with open arms, just as Jesus was. Like, What else would you say to them? Mm. I would say that um, that the church is is a great place to to minister to do ministry for other people. The church can be a great avenue to lift people up. Yeah. Um, we always talking about you know the the things that matter to us, whether it be um, social justice or things that that we think are really important. And we are. We always want to say, okay, what can you do? What what can I do for this movement or for that movement or whatever? But the church is posed to like to be a channel of ministry. Yeah. Um, so instead of instead of thinking uh, like of the church as as a place where oh they, they only talk about Jesus, stop thinking like that. Yeah. The church is about is about is action. So. Um, if you combine people who are ready to lift other people up now you have a movement mm. um, and a movement can impact a lot more people than just one person doing ministry so now the ministry can be uh, can have momentum and energy and so if you're part of that you can do a lot more than you could ever do on your on your own by yourself okay. So even if you're doing ministry by yourself, like I was saying, you know, using what you have, your talents, your technology, whatever it is you have, you're doing that, you're doing it on your own. But if you join a movement that's also thinking about ways to lift other people up and to connect them, then what you offer, what you bring to the table is exponentially more powerful because you're part of something else. Jesus said, to, he said, you're gonna do greater things than I ever did. Jesus mm. told his disciples. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to do more ministry than I ever did. That's, that's just bananas. That's just crazy. So yeah. why? How? Because when you're combined in one movement with the mission of lifting people up, then that is exponentially more powerful. That's like adding to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so I would say, start thinking about how you can do ministry and understand that the church is a great place for that don't if you if you have a thing you know it, well i just don't want to talk about jesus all the time well okay just come and lift people up yeah and in lifting people up guess what you're gonna find jesus you're gonna find jesus and when you when you he said you do this to my to the little ones to the ones that are forgotten by society you do this to to, to whatever your neighbor, they, your widow, anyone exactly, in general. Exactly. Yeah. You do you're doing it to me. I like I'm there. You don't realize it, but I'm there. And so like don't don't think so much about the things that you have dislike about church so much that you decided not to come or whatever, right? Don't don't concentrate on it. Concentrate on what you can do to lift people up as part of a movement. Yeah. Um look at the possibility what it could become, what it could be. And I think that's the way the Holy Spirit builds a better church. Yeah. When we stop thinking about ourselves and about our own hurts and, and insecurities and things, and we start thinking about how we together can lift people up, that's where the Holy Spirit can start moving and really um, 
using us in a way yeah. that we didn't know was possible before. Definitely. So to someone who's actually been hurt before um, by the church, what would you say to them? I would say first, mm, I would say first accept, it's like any, any hurt or grief process. Okay. Accept what has happened. Um, not that it, not don't justify, don't try to justify that what has happened. Accept that you have hurt, right? Accept that that um, that there's pain, and don't run away from it. Mm. Um, talk about it. Think about why it feels so painful. Think about why it was hurtful. Yeah. Um, think about your own self are you being petty about something you know process it don't yeah. don't shy away from it um, and let that process lead you to forgive because it doesn't matter whether you come back to church or not if you've been hurt by somebody whether it was in church or the, the, the it doesn't matter who it is you have to for, you have to learn to forgive for your own sake for the sake of your relationships if you don't forgive your relationships are going to be tainted by your bitterness Mm. Um, and so very true. so like I'm not even telling you to forgive because Jesus loves you I'm telling you to forgive because you need it because yeah. you're going to be happier because you're going to be you're going to thrive if you forgive so accept the hurt forgive uh, and also understand that that people that hurt you is not it's not the whole picture of who the bride of Christ is mm. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I try to see the bride of Christ the way that he sees his own bride. This is his girl. This is his love. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's the love of his life, um, the apple of his eye or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, try to see it the way he sees it mm -hmm. and understand and, and don't confuse the people that have hurt you. I understand maybe they represented the church. That is true. Yeah. But that's not the whole picture either. That is also true. So accept, forgive, and try to change the perspective the way you look at it. Try to see it the way Jesus looks at it. Okay, all right. I like that actually, that's that's true. Three easy steps right there, guys. And we'll put it in Three. our bio. So just in case you wanna send the link, you can as well. Um, a quiz. <laughs> a quiz, yes, a quiz. So Pastor Zon, you actually um, are moving soon and you're moving to a whole different chapter in your life. So yeah. what about the people that aren't Christian, aren't any kind of religion, and are watching this, and that they are wanting to take this new step? What advice would you give them to be able to take that step, to mm. know that it's the right step, right? Because you want to make the correct choice at the end of the day. Yeah. I would say, don't be afraid about what can happen if you if you allow yourself to do ministry. Okay. Uh, allow yourself to be that person that lifts other people up. L give yourself the room to love others truly, everyone, um, and then see what happens. Don't be afraid of of the the differences that will come to your life when that happens. Like this for me, for example. It's a, like you said, it's a different chapter, it's a different kind of ministry, it's a different kind of staff in my hand, I guess you could say. Yeah. But um, if I was, I mean, I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. But if something I have learned from the time I was a missionary is that God knows what you're gonna, where he wants you, where he's gonna be more effective in using you, but also like what you're gonna enjoy doing the most. Mm. He know he knows your heart better than you do. So you yes. think, well, I, I need all this stuff. And God is like, look, I'm trying to push it this way because whether you whether you realize it or not now, you're going to be actually really liking this type of a yeah. movement or this type of whatever. And so don't be afraid of, of doing, try and find ways to the ministry and don't be afraid to see what happens with it, you know. Embrace that. Um, and embrace the opportunities that come your way to do ministry instead of saying, oh, not me. It cannot be me because 
and then you start mis making a bunch of excuses why it cannot be you yeah <laughs> well there's people that do better or blah 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 moses did by the way moses said all of those excuses yes. i didn't mean yes. to talk about moses today i'm sorry no, you're fine were we supposed to talk about moses <laughs> apparently that's what god wanted today <laughs> i guess so moses made all uh, all kinds of excuses he said no there's somebody better i can't talk blah 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 you know again he was 80 years old i mean i'm close to the retirement thank you uh, <laughs> You know, like, yeah, yeah, and God is like, no, I'm trying to push you because at the end of the day, like you don't even realize it, how you're going to, how you are going to be in that ministry. So don't be afraid of the new opportunities that come your way. Don't make excuses and, and embrace it and um, kind of jump in, you know, yeah. because that's when the adventure begins. That's when the fun yes. begins. When you, when you start living your life for ministry and it, and that doesn't mean a pastor. We we define ministry tonight like lifting other people up. So Amen. when you when you start li lifting other people up and living your life with a purpose, yes, that's when your adventure begins. I don't care yes. what your career is, your job. I don't care what exactly. you're doing or driving, what car you're driving, or if you maybe you're not driving any car yet, but whatever. <laughs> the struggle is real, right? But yes, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You 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 will start your adventure when you embrace the purpose of lifting other people up amen so pastor Bisama actually um does not follow us on young adult society not to call him out but he doesn't know that we recently actually posted about your purpose and when you realize your purpose that's when you, you can start doing your calling what yeah. god has called you to and we do a bunch of steps and we put a bunch of questions that you can actually ask yourself so if you want to follow Young Adult Society on Instagram and go over our post and see how that could help you in any way, yeah. feel free to do so. We will be providing all the links and bios of our social media as well, including Pastor Bisama. So if you want to follow him along his journey, because he does a lot, uh, I'm not kidding. Um, this today was just something, a preview, and hopefully one day we have him for a longer podcast. Yeah. Um, and that way he can also tell us about his new journey and everything that he will be doing somewhere else <laughs> for sure for sure so, you'll come visit you're gonna come visit yes okay you best believe when you finally get that house <laughs> <laughs> so super the struggle random. is real yeah <laughs> pastor Bisama hasn't found a house yet but he's moving <laughs> to a whole other state yeah <laughs> I am. but if you guys pray about it maybe yes so there you have it that's your first lift me up bro yes. lift me up your first uplifting is praying for pastor Bisama and for his family so that way they can have a, an amazing move to a new home that will be theirs. There you go. So thank you, Pastor Bisama, for being here. Thank you for allowing me to pick your brain. Even though he had no idea about the questions, I want you guys to know that from the start, he had no idea. I did not submit to him. I meant to so many times, and I just did not. Um, but look Impro. We, Impro. we rolled with Impro. Huh? We roll with the punches, come what may. That's how we do it here. And are there any last words you would like to give our audience, Pastor Bisama? No, I just thank you. Thank you for doing this. Um, I love, I love the, this idea, this concept. Um, you guys are movers and shakers of the world. You don't realize it. You might not see it. You might be so involved in your, uh, so worried about the college class that you can't really pass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, finals are over. I'm no longer Thanks stressing. The Lord. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you might not see the whole picture yet. That it's hard to see the whole picture. Yeah. And you know, a different depends on. It's, it's every stage has ups and downs, right? Definitely. But what I'm saying is, step back, realize you are the movers and shakers. Mm -hmm. um, let God change. Let God change you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what He can do, mm -hmm. with and for and through you. Amen. There we nice. go. There you have it. So thank you again, Young Adult Society, for joining us. Yes. And again, feel free to leave any questions, comments, concerns you have in our DMs, in our YouTube, TikTok. We have all the platforms that actually Pastor Bisama mentioned. You know, he's up to date with everything. So feel free to let us know. And like I trying, said, I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying. <laughs> trying to keep up as a young adult, even though he is, he still is, right, guys? Uh, right. So. Just don't look at my bald part. Oh. <laughs> So thank you again, and thank we you all. Will... And if you all have any questions, you know, DM, yeah. DM us, or if you want to DM it directly, you should do that. But yeah. DM, you know, start with the, the yes. 
with young adult society yeah. but pastor be someone's platforms will also be on there so yeah. if like i said you ask questions him, yeah. don't be afraid ask, ask questions. questions what do you what do you got what do you got <laughs> he's ready for a second